Although my time here was brief, I can say with distinction that Porto is one of the most beautiful and relaxing cities I have ever experienced. When I started going through the footage from my trip, I realized I didn't talk to the camera very much. Over the course of three days in town, I found myself just walking around, drinking wine and eating good food, which is what makes Porto so great. But that doesn't make for much of a video. So let me show you what I consider a perfect day in the city. Like any self-respecting food lover and culture junkie, I'd start the day at the public market. Have a little breakfast and warm up from the morning sun over figs, olives, fruits, and watch the fishmongers set out on their daily routine. From there, it's down to Porto's stunning waterfront, and it's here where I spent the majority of my time. Street vendors sell all kinds of goodies, from cotton candy and roasted chestnuts to perhaps the greatest street treat of all time, the churro. On weekends especially, it's a popular place to be, with little shops and restaurants on one side and really good wineries lining the other. Luckily for me, I had a Brazilian friend named Carla living in Porto, so she helped me understand the city a little bit better, starting with the food. House wine, shrimp, pork, gizzards, potatoes, sausage, bacalao, chorizo, arroz, arroz, and what else? Quem mais precisa? Vinho. Já? We might have ordered too much. I think we got everything here. The first meal in Porto had to be a big one. After you eat way too much, just go hang out back down by the river until the sun comes down, or explore some of the incredible historical sites like Porto Cathedral, Liberdade Square, and the artwork inside Sao Bento Station. It's really impressive. You could also go visit the now touristy cafe where some say J.K. Rowling wrote the first draft of Harry Potter. I don't believe it myself, but you can find some interesting Harry Potter inspired wardrobe just by looking at the local college students and their long cloak uniforms. Regardless of your afternoon and early evening activities, your dinner options should be pretty certain. You have to try the most famous dish in Porto, Francesinha. Vamos pra cá, pra na baixa. A ridiculous sandwich piled high with a variety of roasted and cured meats, cheeses, and covered in a hot, thick tomato and beer sauce. Served with french fries, of course. Que temos? Temos aqui uma francesinha, prato especial do porco. Melhor prato, diretamente do porto para o tourist town. <laughs> Alright, let's try this thing. I'm a little bit nervous. Let's get in there. After this meal, you can go out if you want, but I'm done for the night. Gane, gane, gane. On the road again, back on the road, leaving Porto now, getting ready to go to Hegua. It's about an hour inland, an hour east. It's where all the wine comes from. Pretty excited. Let's go there. All right, a little bonus here. If you have time, I highly recommend getting out to the wine country, about an hour inland from Porto. I only had a few hours to spare before I had to be back in Lisbon, so I drove out there just for a quick peek of the landscape because my friend Carla said it was worth it, and she was absolutely right. Straight from the source, wine grapes of Porto. Look at this, unbelievable.
Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to check in and fill you in on some upcoming events. I'm currently in my Airbnb here in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, one more video from Lisbon coming up, then Taiwan, and then a whole mess of videos from Japan. It wasn't my intentions for this Porto video to, to be so voiceover focused. Sometimes I just get lost in the moment, but I'm trying to do a better job of, uh, of talking to the camera in a more vlog style manner. So expect that a lot more from Japan. And if you guys like the video, as always, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks.